Hello everyone, this is Christy, and today's graphic project will be a trace of a logo that I want to convert uh, into a logo for an online store, for an Etsy shop. And the painting I'm going to start from is this image of a crooked or creaky shack painted by my daughter. And I'm going to convert this into a logo. Now, you know, logos need to be less complex than this. So I need to really reduce the graphics in this because when you zoom out and you're looking at it at a very small dimension, you can see it's very hard to see what's there. So that's why the logo must be um, stylized and reduced in colors, reduced in shapes, uh, so that it's very clear to see. So the process I'm going to have uh, attempt to do is I'm going to try to make it into three versions. Um, the first version will be a very detailed trace of this logo. And the second one will be a reduced version. And the third one will be a very, very reduced uh, one, mostly just going to be the silhouette of this whole thing so that it works as a logo for very, very small sizes so that even if it's very small, you can still see what it is and how it looks. So let's start. First of all, I'm going to I am here in Zara and I'm going to use the page and layer gallery because I want to separate this image from the graphics that I'm going to produce now so that I don't move it around when I'm actually trying to trace on top of it. And also, I'm going to make it a bit transparent. So um, I'm going to just go to the transparency and just move it a bit, up a bit, not too much because I still want to see quite nicely how it looks. And, you know, in the page and layer gallery here, I have one layer where the, this image is, and I'm going to lock this layer so that I don't make any changes to it. And I'm going to add a new layer now, and I'm going to just call it uh, trace one. Just call it trace one, doesn't matter. So this layer is going to be editable. So now I'm going to start tracing this. And to do it, I need to look at what's, which shapes I want to keep, which lines I want to keep, and which lines I want to discard. So if I zoom in here, you will see that the roof has these very thick lines to, uh, to show the uh, pieces of the roof there. So I'm going to use those thick ones on the outlines as my main lines. And then I'm going to trace these little lines in between to show the wooden kind of fibers. And also here at the windows, you know, I may not be doing a double frame there and so on. So let's start. I'm going to just start with the central area here. And I'm going to use the uh, shape tool. The uh, It's called, I don't know what it's called, actually. It's uh, just the shape tool. Yes, it's the shape tool. And, uh, you know, if I, if I click here, it, it draws a line like that. So I can do it in two ways. I can actually draw just lines and, and make, the, um, make the outlines of this. So, for example, if I so click this, this, and this, you will see that I'm creating a line there. I can then move my cursor on the line and kind of bend it a little bit. And then I can use the, um, the shape of the, the outline to actually make it look like it's drawn by a pen, uh, by a brush or a pen, depending on that. So I can actually go to the um, line gallery here and use stroke, stroke shapes and maybe, or pressure profiles, and maybe try to use maybe this one that makes it look like it's, uh, it's drawn by a pen and by a brush, or maybe that one. And then I can make the outline thicker from the top there. Let's say, no, that's too much. Let's say two. So as you can see, it's kind of, I think it should be the other way around, starting here and then going there. And I can have a nice kind of a pen shape. So I can, I can just keep going like this, you know, and create various, uh, create my, my roof tiles there, you know. So if you want to change the selection from the previous line in Zara, you have to press shift and then click where you want to start a new line. So if I'm drawing this line here, 
and I continue here, it's going to connect it to it. So I don't want that. So I'm clicking, I'm pressing shift and click to deselect the last shape I was working on and then start a new shape like that. Now, this is one way to do it. And I think I will use this method for the internal lines, but for the corner, the outline of the every tile, I want to actually do it a different way because I want to be able to then change it and make the second version of my logo that will make the tiles full color, full, sorry, full, full shape, not just the, uh, the corner um, with the, uh, the edges there. So I'm going to just remove these ones now for now, and I'm going to actually trace it with a 0 0.25 outline and with no shape, just normal constant uh, line shape. Uh, okay, so let me show you how I'm doing it. So if I go here, I'm gonna just start there and actually do the outline of my um, tile there. And then after you've done that, if you wanna make it rounded, you can pull on the line like this and get, you know, use Bezier curves to edit that shape. All right. And that gives me, you know, that gives me more freedom in terms of what I want to do later and which you will see it's going to be taking these shapes and changing them into full uh, color tiles. So I'm going to start doing this now for the whole thing. And uh, I will probably speed up this video at this point so that you don't have to wait for me to do it hours and hours or how long there, how, however long it takes to do this. You may have noticed that I am not really respecting the shapes um, from the painting exactly as they are because I'm just approximating some of them and correcting some of them as I go. I make decisions based on what I want to do later. So I don't really put much emphasis on the accuracy of the trace as opposed to getting me a practical shape in place so that I can work with it later. So. If you notice that in here, for example, I have the shape that's touching the other tile here. Well, I actually may not like that later because I want to separate them so I can pull that down a bit and then um, I can actually work visually to make it look like the tiles are overlapping without touching each other because later it will be harder to define where each tile starts and ends if I don't have this distance between them.
Now for this area here, the uh, the top uh, thing there, um, I the um, shapes might be a bit thin, especially when we zoom out and we make this small. So I'm actually making the lines much thicker and I'm also separating the letters. I'm going to separate the letters from the main frame here, but I'm going to keep the uh, quirkiness of the letters. So, you know, give them sort of a like a Harry Potter kind of feel to them with the twisted corners. Uh, the edges and the, the, the letter, um, you know, the serif area and all that. So I'm just going to make those um, kind of crooked as well. That is the point of the, the whole design to be crooked and creaky and not very straight. Not my proudest, proudest <clears throat> cockerel I've done, but um, I think that should do for that size. Okay, so now we have traced the broad lines of the whole uh, logo. And now we need to add the detailed strokes. Let's see what we have so far. If I hide the background um, a layer, I can see that I have kind of got most of it. I missed some of the some of this area so I'm going to go and fix that now I'm just going to add some uh, missing bits there doesn't have to be exactly in the same place okay so this is what we have so far now I'm going to add the in other lines the lines on the tiles I'm going to add them as just straight strokes with the brush with pressure um, and uh, with the pressure brush so that's going to actually show it's still going to be a vector format but it's going to have like the thicker and the thinner ends so to look like it's a brush stroke so i'm actually going to put those on a separate layer just because i want to easily separate them later so i'm going to just create a new layer here i'm going to call it uh brush strokes let's say that Okay, and then I'm going to turn on this painting again. And instead of just drawing contours, I'm just going to draw lines. And the, the, I'm going to just choose one point. I think this is enough. Let's see. Yeah, it's one point thick is enough. And I'm going to use a stroke shape uh, to look like a brush. So let's see which one would be best. Let's see maybe the, this one. Okay, let's see what that looks like. No, wait a minute. There. Okay, maybe maybe that one or mm, I'm not sure. This one is too thin at the other end and this one doesn't have too much variation on it, but I think it should work. Okay, ocean liner. Okay, that's the one. All right, so the last shape you apply the last brush stroke you apply in, in Zara it remembers that and uses it for all the other ones so I am editing on this layer now brush strokes and I'm just gonna go and draw straight lines where I have all of my other all of my other lines I'm just gonna fill them all in okay uh, let me just start from the top so I'm just going to try that. I'm going to not I'm going to try and make them not too close to each other 
So I'm still, I'm still kind of correcting things as I go because I don't want to have them touching each other so much uh, because they, you know, they provide a bit of um, chaos, but not too much. Okay, so I think I've finished all the brush, uh, brush strokes. Let's see what it looks like without the background image. Okay, so here we go. We have the um, very first version of the vector um, logo, but okay, this is not enough for a logo because it's very detailed. This is good for a black and white trace. I can see here that I think this is a bit too thick, so I can make it a bit thinner, just pull on these lines and thin it down a bit like that it, it's a bit too dominant in this corner so is this one again okay and i can just adjust these just by moving these dots and the bezier curves to okay make them a bit thinner okay this is a bit cartoonish uh, well more than a bit cartoonish and now i want to save this one. Um, this is the first version of the black and white um, painting. And based on this one, I want to create the second version, which is a more simplified version of this one that would work if I zoom out. Notice that although this is vector and of course you can, you know, scale it any way you like because it's a vector format. Uh, for smaller sizes, this is again very hard to see. As you can see here, there's a lot of detail there. It gets very crowded when you zoom out. So the second step I'm going to do is I'm going to take this version and make it even simpler, but keeping the main elements. Okay, in order to do that, I'm going to group all these elements together and save them. First of all, I'm going to select everything here on this layer and OK, it's all together there and it's now become part of the same layer. And now I'm going to create another layer, uh, call it Trace 2, and I'm going to copy all of that. I'm going to hide this layer now, the brush strokes, and I'm going to paste this here on the second trace okay i'm just going to bring back the background i think i shifted it a bit let me just put it back on where it belongs all right like that okay now this is where i'm starting from 
um, I'm still using my graphic from the background as a guideline, but I'm now going to simplify things very much. So I don't really think I need the background too much anymore, but I'm going to use it and I'm going to ungroup these things now. Okay. And remember, I'm working on this layer, so I want to lock all the other ones uh, so I don't inadvertently move, change them. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I can, um, I should probably just um, get rid of the the in internal lines like that. And the reason, this is one of the reasons why I started with the contours of these tiles as sh fillable shapes rather than just outlines is for this reason that I'm going to use it now. I'm going to just delete the internal dots from here, the internal corners, and that will make my shape become a full shape like that. Okay, so I'm going to do pretty much the same on to all of them, but I'm going to leave some of them. Uh, all of the all of the tiles will have a distance between them so that they can still be distinguished individually. So let me show you how I'm going to just um, remove these. Sorry, too much. This is a full shape. Okay, so I'm going to remove these. Um, these lines here and these lines and here we go we're transforming that into a filled shape okay so I'm doing the same for all of them and deciding on each one of them what I want to keep and what I want to remove so if I need to make a tile um, uh, part of um, uh, two shapes I can actually select both of them and add the shapes so now they all become part of the same thing so if I want to I can now expand that shape and create a more complex polygon like that and every time I need to add a new dot a new point there I can just double click it's very easy in Zara to do this and um, it makes it very easy to edit shapes like this all right, so I'm actually going to uh, just remove those lines and I'm just going to expand the main shape, to be honest. I think it's faster. Okay, remove those there. Oops, too much. It helps if I zoom in.
All right, so this is the second version of the logo. I have finished simplifying all the tiles and they've all become black now. I believe that the top row is a little bit chaotic, which makes sense if it's a creaky shack, you know, you've patched things over the, the years. And now the bottom row is a bit more, it's a little bit too regular, too, um, I don't know, too uniform. So I'm going to just take the tiles and try to make them a bit more crooked in that, sand, in that area there. So I'm going to just try and make them sort of overlap here and there and maybe, you know, change their, um, their appearance, the alignment so that they don't look so perfect. And I'm going to just try and skew them a bit. Um, round the corners, maybe adjust the outline a little bit there. Okay, so that they don't really look so well aligned uh, in this area there. So, okay. So this is the second version, as I said, more simplified. It's mostly black now. There is no more detailed strokes. And if I go and zoom out, it's a little more evident what it is, even if at this size. And now for the third and final version, I think the one that's going to become the, the actual logo of the Creaky Shack, I'm going to just uh, make another copy of this layer. And I'm going to save this one. So I'm going to select everything here, group, copy, lock this layer and create another one. I'm going to call it three and I'm going to paste here my logo and I'm going to start from this one to make the more simplified logo. Now for this job, it's going to be much simpler because we don't need to worry about all the individual tiles. So I just need to delete everything, all the, all the tiles, and just keep the outline of the roof, the outline of the second row there, and then the uh, contours of the window, the doors, and maybe the, this top thing here on the roof. I'm not sure if that's going to survive. So let's start by deleting all of the tiles here, all the tiles on the outside. I don't want those. Uh, I don't need them. Actually, I may actually change their color and trace around all of them until I have my... I'm going to make it pink for a second there. And I'm going to just trace around the shape of my roof like that. I'm ignoring the gaps. And I'm just making one single shape from the entire roof. Here we are, and this is black. And I can now delete all of the pink old bits. Now I have kept the kind of the, I've, I've put it together with the roof section there. I'm going to just make, put some distance between these things. And I think I may actually combine them like that and select both of them. Add, same here. Okay, a bit further down, different angle. All right, same with these ones. Um, I'm not yet decided if I should keep them separate or not. I'm gonna come back to them now. And for now, just do the window. The window is actually gonna become a single uh, piece. And I'm just gonna delete the separation here and the internal points. And perhaps just 
leave it like that. Let's see how it works. If it doesn't work very well, we will combine it with the, the windowsill there. But for now, I may move it a bit lower to separate it from the roof section. Okay, this here is a little too many, too many dots there. So, okay, no, I don't like that. I think. Okay, and I don't need that. All right, that's looking good. And now on the bottom windows as well, just, oops, just remove the the details and there as well and the internal dots like that forget to save sometimes Zara makes funny uh, gestures such as crashing all right I don't think we need the door handle anymore and we will also make the door oops we will also make the door one single shape more distance between the door and the bottom bit there central a bit okay so here we go we have a very simple um i think this top thing's not going to survive but let's see so if if i'm zooming out already we can see the logo is although it retains a bit of contrast a bit of detail um, or, and complexity we can we can make out what it is so i'm not crazy about the window sills so i'm going to remove them to give more uh, definition to the the rest of it i'm going to unite the door with the floor bit there okay and I think a bit more distance between these tiles is necessary. So I'm going to just select each tile and slightly scale it down. Maybe every second tile, not each one. Okay, so they, they maintain their place, but they are smaller. So I can uh, maybe add a bit of spacing here uh, let's make that one to stretch out like this a bit okay when it's very small uh, it helps to have a uh, more distance between the elements because then they are better defined and actually let me just try something real quick see what that does I think I like it. I like the fact that I can um, connect the top part so that gives me more room and reduces the complexity of the whole design. They look a bit too uniform I think now but um, Let's see what that does. Let's just put it there like that. Okay, so it looks like uh, one of the tiles is flying off. I'm gonna just move that back up there. Okay. Right. Now let's see what this looks like when it's small. Very good, very good. Looks very good. I can still I can see the tiles now are better defined, and this um, this element at the top there, I think it's not going to work unless we scale it quite large. So let's see what happens if I make it larger, actually disproportionate, maybe even crooked like that a bit. It, it is in the, after all, it is a crooked so let's see what that does okay I think it might work with it or without it uh, honestly at this size it looks like a pirate 
like a pirate logo so I'm not entirely sure if I if I just make a copy of this I'm just gonna keep it there and I'm gonna remove uh, everything but the maybe I'll, I'll keep the I'll keep one line and this, the letters. It's almost like it's spelling news. <laughs> okay, that is not an improvement. Okay, let's see if I remove everything and keep the cockerel on top like that, much larger. Yeah. I think that's it. The only thing that this building doesn't have is a chimney. Um, so I don't know. It was not in the vision of the original artist. Uh, but uh, I'm quite happy with it now. It, I know it, it looks a bit now too simplified, but it. I think it's a good. Uh, a, it's a good simplification that allows us to um, create a logo out of it. Let me see if I add more distance between these elements here I'm gonna just add them like that and flying off a bit so just provide a bit of yeah definitely better with the cockerel on top and without this complexity here okay now let's turn on the original graphic so what we did was is here we have started with a very simple uh, with a painting, we started with a painting like that. Uh, I'm going to just turn back on the uh, turn off the transparency on this. Right. So we started from this very complex painting, and then we train we turned it into a traced version like that. Uh, actually, let me just uh, unblock everything. So let's put them side by side. Turn on that. All right, here we go. So that was the, the first version where we, we have turned it into a vector format, pretty much maintaining most of the elements. I have lost this green uh, sort of plant hanging across. I think, I think that will, would have added too much complexity to the whole thing. I mean, I know it's kind of like a story kind of thing with the jack and the beanstalk or whatever that is. Um, I think I'm choosing to leave it out from the whole thing. Then the second version we did is we we simplified it even more to make it into a monochromatic um, and not much detail left there. That's good for a kind of a... Um, reduced size but not enough for a logo i think this is still too complex for a logo that's why we have gone and done the other version where we simplified it even more uh sorry i'm just taking everything there we simplified it even more okay so even more simple like that single color and we had to add some distance between the elements so that we can make it smaller and so that it would be more clear. I mean, we can actually make some improvements to this one, maybe, maybe add a bit more detail to the roof, but not too much. So if I zoom out, you can see which one is the most, the, the most suggestive, the most easily visible one is obviously the one on the right there that could be turned into a logo so this is the website address for this project and um, yeah if we if we use some quirky quirky font there just to play around with it a bit no that's not very good quirky shack not too bad um that's a bit yeah maybe something like this it's not going to be part of the logo but i'm just playing with it um so yeah this this we have it we today we have taken a painting and turned it into something that could be maybe uh, a logo thank you for watching very much and um 
If you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel to get more videos in the future about projects like these, just walking through them and uh, other tutorials and helpful resources for design work, web design work and uh, so on. Thank you again.